everybody. This is the Coffee with a Geek Show. This is, we are in August of 2021. New school year is underway. We're hopefully, we're in the middle still of a pandemic and trying to work our way through that. But with me is an amazing guest that I saw. It was the We Video Conference, I believe. Stevie? Yep, it was the We Video Conference. Yeah, amazing presentation. So I'm really excited to chat with you. Um, with me is Stevie Frank, and you are a 12 year teaching vet. That's pretty amazing. And again, hard to believe it goes by so fast. But you have been teaching fifth grade humanities at Zionsville West Middle School, and you're the department chair, one of the equity coaches, and your passions. Your passions include uh, news literacy, which is so valuable in today's age of social media and um, just media craziness in general, uh, <laughs> and also critical thinking, social justice, and podcasting. We're definitely going to talk about podcasting. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining me, Stevie. It's a real pleasure to have you. Well, thanks for having me on the show. I'm super excited. So let's start with the the most obvious question, what's your favorite coffee blend? Do you have a co favorite coffee blend? Well, yes, right? All of the <laughs> coffee. Um, my favorite blend, my home blend, I would say, is I'm an espresso type of gal, um, but I will just drink drip coffee. You know, any coffee in any way of its form is perfection for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a more espresso type of gal. I just had the Starbucks blonde roast in my to-go cup this morning. Awesome. Um, so I've got so many questions for you, so many good stuff, especially when it comes to podcasting and even if you want to talk about we video a little bit, but let's dig into just kind of your background. Can you tell me, I always like to frame it as kind of your educational journey. What uh, brought you to teaching? What was that pathway? I love this question. I love that it's a journey. Um, so my educational journey started with school for me was a place for me to kind of get away, right? It was a place for me to... Um, I had really enjoyed it. I liked structure and I liked boundaries. And so it was a place that I really thrived in. Um, I was one of those kiddos where it was like poster child, bad childhood. And so for me, school was my out. Um, and so that was kind of the journey that really just took me on to wanting to teach and wanting to see if I could, you know, make that other kiddo that might have that similarity with me of, you know, you can get away if, you know, if you want, and it can be here at school. And so that's why I'm so passionate about our public school education system and what we provide for kiddos, because for some kiddos, it is, it is really the light in their day. Um, and I love creating that relationship with them. Um, so then once I graduated high school, I went on to um, go into college and it was originally for business. Um, because I was like, I'm going to make some money. Right. So then, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Um, and then I ended up, um, kind of going through with it a little bit more. And I was like, you know what, my passion is in teaching. And so after talking to one of the guidance counselors there, she said, your head is in business and your heart is in teaching and you got to follow your heart. And so that was great advice. Um, so that kind of, I went back to IUPY for my master's in education for language. It was just a passion of mine, um, obviously education. So here I am. What's IEPY? IEPY is Indiana University, Purdue University at, at Indianapolis. Nice. <laughs> so my college town was like, you know, Indianapolis. So it was, it was really cool to kind of have that experience for sure. Wow. Okay. Um, any like, moments like spark moments that just said wow like yeah I've got to go into teaching was it that advice or was it was there something else so I taught um, vacation bible school and it was funny I was off I, I, I had all my classes lined up perfectly and I was going to be off for the summer and so I'm a busy body and I reached out to my church and I was like hey do you guys need any help and they were like well, why don't you be a teacher? And I was like, that's funny. Like, <laughs> I don't think I could do that. And I did it. And it was, you know, by Thursday, I had my mind made up of, I was going to go and do the teaching thing. So it was, it was just something that that was my moment. So yeah. Nice. Okay. So let's dig into podcasting because uh, I've been, I was a 13 year elementary teacher, mostly fifth grade. So we've got that in common. I was, and now at my current position, I've been at 15 years as a tech 
coach, I guess is the best way to describe it, or tech integrator. And when I started doing that 15 years ago, podcasting was the hot thing, you know, and it's still the hot thing, I think. Um, and I love listening to podcasts, but tell me from your perspective of, uh, you know, podcasting in your role as teacher, as, you know, even st students learning. And let's, let's dig into that process because, Again, I saw your presentation at the We Video Conference, and it was it was really good, and it really inspired me, and it was it really again sparked some ideas. So let's talk podcasting. Let's talk podcasting. So <laughs> it is it's so much fun. Um, actually, I I kind of knew I wanted to do podcasting with the kiddos. I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. Um, so my way that I just kind of was like, all right, let's do the thing, um, was I was about to start planning a unit for um, their identity novels. And so we do a huge identity um, kind of journey here through. Um, so Sarah Ahmed's book, Being the Change, was definitely huge for me, Facing History and then Learning for Justice, were all of the wonderful, amazing resources that I stole from um, to create what identity unit we have. So then I let the kiddos choose a book, a novel. And from that novel, I was like, I'm going to have them do something before in the past I've had them make like transmediations or do a project. And so I was like, let's, let's try out podcasting. Um, then I had a parent email me and she was like, Hey, I don't know if you heard about this NPR student podcast challenge. And I had, you know, so when you hear the first thing, maybe you're not going to do the thing, but then by the second or third time, you're like, okay, I'm going to do the thing. I feel inspired. So, um, so that's when we kind of jumped on in with the kiddos. And so I got with our tech integration specialist and he had a pretty good relationship with Audrey Eau Claire from Soundtrap. And that is um, kind of a medium of how we recorded our um, podcasts. And so it was, you know, I just asked the kids once they finished their novel where I was like, what do you want to teach Zionsville West Middle School? And I realized that once you change their audience, to not just me or not just each other, but to the school, like the stakes are high, right? Um, mm -hmm. They care about what they're putting out there. It's not just writing out a paper. It's okay. I'm about to teach people things. So then I need to become an expert at it. Um, so then that was kind of where our journey came from. It was the most highly and has been since I've revisited it, the most highly engaging project all hands on deck. I had kids, you know, going home and working on these projects. Um, and it was the most amazing thing. But lo and behold, one of our groups from the first year that we did it, she, um, they received an honorable mention. So I was so excited for them. They were so excited. It was so cool to give them that information because it was right when the shutdown happened um, back in March of 2020. Um, so we found out a couple months later. And so it was really nice to be able to share in that information um, with the kiddos. So tell me about that learning process. Um, tell me about the magic that happens with kids and creating a podcast of their own. So it's, you know, when you talk about student agency and student voice, like it is their voice, right? It is them working on it. Um, I ended up kind of noticing a little bit through with it where I was like, you know what? I think we should have a, every kid should have their own role. So there were some kiddos who just, they're just simply like, they're hard to reach. You know, no matter what book I give them, they're just not gonna like reading. No matter what they write about, they're not gonna like writing. And so a way for me to socio-emotionally connect with these kiddos was I was like, okay, we've got this really cool thing, Soundtrap. So every kid likes to, well, not every kid, but there are some kids that just love to watch YouTube videos. And so I was like, well, why don't you become an expert on using Soundtrap? And within like the Soundtrap area, you can click on videos and then it just has a ton of tutorials. And so that was my connection with those kiddos because they were like, okay, reading's not my jam, but making music and that sort of thing is. Um, so then I was able to really connect with them. Also a part of like NPR student podcast challenge, you can't have any outside noise or sound effects unless it's made by you or the kiddo. And so a lot of my kids that are more musically inclined were able to play music and instruments and then they were able to use those as their transition pieces. So it was definitely all hands on deck because a lot of times, and I'm sure teachers listening right now is like, well, I tried this really big project and then not everybody was engaged or not everybody was working on something, but when every kiddo got their role, then they were like, ah, like, this is what I'm, this is what I'm going to become an expert on to help my group. 
So that was, that was probably one of the coolest parts of our journey that we took was everybody was engaged. They were all ready to get their voice out there. So, you know, as you were talking through that process, uh, what came to mind for me was School of Rock. I don't know if you've ever seen that. The I have, School yes, of Rock. Jack Black. You know, and, um, you know, the magic of that movie is that, you know, he brings together kids with all these different talents and produces, right, the, the magic there. And so that's really what was coming to mind as you were describing that is that all these kids have different talents and abilities and skills. And with podcasting, you're able to tap into some of those. And a lot of those, or some of those, are kind of maybe skills that traditionally aren't, you know, school-based, like a YouTuber, you know, learning from YouTube. Um, so bringing in those new elements of technology that we have available, just, uh, again, it's fantastic. And I think, um, I think every teacher should give this a try, whether they will or not, that's a different story. But so for the new teacher that wants to try podcasting or even just dip their toes into it, uh, where should they begin? What's a, what's a, what's a starting point? I would say dive right in. It's gonna, it's not going to be perfect um, at first and, but it's going to be a fun and cool journey and your kids are going to be along for the ride. So they're willing to do it with you. I would say um, where I had done, because I ended up changing things last year, just because you know, between half of our kids online and in person, you're like, how am I going to record this thing? Um, so what I decided to do was just kind of pare it down a little bit. So instead of using Soundtrap, um, which is a little bit more elaborate, um, we use Flipgrid. So Flipgrid has a mic only portion as well. And so I was like, OK, I'm just going to go ahead and have the kiddos, you know, they're going to write, write their scripts out and then they're going to record on Flipgrid. And it worked out just as well. Um, I would say like the quality, we didn't, you know, put them into NPR student podcast challenge, but they, then it was also kind of nice too, because some of the kiddos got to use their favorite type of music. And since it was just me and the kids in the classroom, then it was, you know, okay, if they put it in, um, just because it wasn't, you know, copyrighted, we weren't selling it, it wasn't going out there. And so I really kind of appreciated that aspect of it where it just made it so much easier. Um, and then another colleague kind of jumped on board when I was doing it that way too. So you can make it into this month long process or this two month long process if you want, or, I mean, we did that unit in about two weeks. And so that way it was just, you know, a little bit more pared down. And so I got the inspiration from that was because I was planning their persuasive writing and I was like, oh, it gets painful sometimes, you know, teaching writing <laughs> to fifth graders where you're like, they're not, you know, okay, I've got to have, you know, the claim and then the evidence and I've got to teach lessons about transitions. And I was like, you know what, what if we do podcasting? And that's how I snag a grade for that standard. And kids love to talk and kids love to persuade others. So why don't I meet them where they're at? Why don't I, you know, have that happen? And so that's, would be my best advice. What programs did you use or devices, Chromebooks, iPads, computers? Um, we all have um, a bring your own device. And so we had all the devices. Okay, <laughs> we great. didn't use iPads. And the first one we had kiddos using their, um, their phones for recording just so that the, it was a little bit more clear. And other than that, they were just pretty much their laptops. Um, so yes, the kids are coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh gosh. Okay. So, um, all right. We could talk, we could talk for another hour on podcasting, but I just, you know, again, I, I love the range of things you can do with podcasting. Um, you know, for those teachers out there, you know, we video and I hate to keep kind of plugging them. This isn't an advertisement for them, but I think we video is fantastic. They do have like a podcasting piece to that. Um, you know, I know, again, you hit it like uh, their phones, if the kids have phones and again, or you could even use your own if you want to just put the audio on there. There's so many programs I know within an iPhone, I'm sure on, you know, a, a Pixel or an Android based phone, you can record right from your phone and get a really pretty decent quality, especially if you have just earbuds and a uh, headset like that. Um, so audio quality can be done pretty cheaply and easily with existing devices. Um, again, Office 365 or Word has voice recording program. So clean and easy uh, to at least get that part. And then the video 
piece is definitely another uh, layer. But again, programs like WeVideo, uh, GarageBand, iMovie, you know, standard programs, even Windows Photos app, I think has it. Uh, Chromebook, you have to kind of help me out on a Chromebook. Um, not sure if there's some good, probably you're going to have to go with uh, some sort of third party like Screencastify or something, but so many awesome tools. All right. So I know you've got kids coming. So what are some other areas besides podcasting in the education, educational technology realm? Are you in, are you interested in these days? So I'm really wanting to try it out digital sketchbooking. Um, I was really inspired. Um, his first name is, is dropping, um, but Herrera. And he does a lot of digital sketchbook um, noting. And so, and then Carrie Boga, I just bought her book actually. Um, and I had, she has YouTubes on, I believe YouTube videos on like Saturday mornings. And so she's inspired me to try out um, just sketch noting. And then I would like to take that to the digital sketch noting because we were hybrid last year. So some of my kids were still fully remote and I had some kiddos like were doing the digital sketch noting and then sending that to me. And I'm like, I'm inspired by what they're doing because I'm like, I have no idea how you did that. So what, how are you doing the thing? Um, so that's been really pretty cool as well. I've really enjoyed kind of dabbling into that, but I, I have her book. And so I'm really excited to dive right into hers and figure out how to do the thing. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's something that's been on my radar too. And, you know, even just, you know, whiteboarding with kids, even if you're remote, you know, you can create, set up a digital whiteboard with students and yeah. have them draw together and do creation on that scale. I, I love that idea too. Um, and there are some great resources out there. And I think, you know, you know, teacher to teacher talk, I, I think with kids being such visual learners, just by the nature of our technology these days. Again, this is uh, a generalization. Not every kid is is a digital learner, but um, I think that that visual, the icon based. You know, I think we're an icon based society at this point. So the icon with the text uh, really is some powerful learning and has and digital. You know, sketch noting can tap Absolutely. into both of those, and it makes taking notes fun. You know, I, I doodle too. So whenever I'm bored in notes and so I'm like, well, why wouldn't I doodle about what's going on with sketch noting? So <laughs> I'm kind of excited to start the journey. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. When I talked to teachers about sketch note, I said, here's, here's a test. If you want to see if it actually works is go to one of your faculty meetings and sketch note your faculty meeting and see if you paid more attention, see if you got more out of that meeting Great and see advice. if you could, yeah, and see if you could recall it better after. And I think yeah. you really can, you know, um, anytime you go to a meeting that may be dry, it's a great way to keep yourself engaged. I think. A good idea. All right. So let, that. All right. So let me know how that goes. Your next faculty meeting. <laughs> will do. Will do for all sure. All right. Um, what are your strengths and weaknesses that today's students bring? I would say our strengths that kiddos bring is their availability and their openness to try new technologies. It's not this overwhelming sense for them. They're like, oh, okay, just teach me the, just teach me the thing and I'll do it. And so I think that openness and willing to dive right in is a generational thing for sure, because there's some people who I've taught different pieces of technology and it's like, nope, nope, but like, it's just too much. And with kids, they're like, show me all the things. It might take a little bit to teach them. It takes kids any time to teach anything. But if you're more willing to be like, okay, well, let's, let's learn it. Then they're right there with you, which is pretty fun. That's a really nice way to encapsulate. And I think it kind of tied in a lot of what we were talking about. Okay, so here's the speed geek questions. We'll try and okay. do as many okay. as you can before you have to take off. Uh, this is, what's your favorite app? My favorite app. So my favorite app for hosting um, and education, Twitter, for sure. I would say my favorite app for sharing information, photos with family and friends, Instagram. And then if I want to unwind and just laugh and have fun, TikTok. Nice. Do you have your own TikTok channel? I am not that cool. <laughs> okay, me either. <laughs> me either. I'm not there yet. I don't think I can be there. But anyways, uh, who or what inspires you? 
Oh, goodness. My colleagues, um, people that I see on Twitter posting of things that they do, it kind of gives me that inspiration to go do the thing. So I, I always am inspired by educators. Nice. Okay. And let's do. Okay. What's a tech trend to watch for? A tech trend? Yeah. Hmm. The juice. Oh, <laughs> so the juice is amazing. Um, I wish I could use it with my fifth graders. It's just a little bit higher um, in reading level than I would do it, but it's amazing. Delivers news into the kids email. So give it a shot. I saw that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jamie Elman. Yeah. My other uh, Kafu the Geek interviews was talking about that. So yeah, it's very cool. All right, let's do one more. I promise we'll get right. you out of here. Um, what's a bucket list item? Oh my goodness. What is my bucket list item? I would say I want to hit every state um, and I would like to try to visit as many different countries as I possibly can. So that would be my bucket list. All right, some traveling going on. Yeah, <laughs> especially now during a pandemic, we just had to cancel our Vegas trip, um, uh, but we're still gonna go out for um, the birthdays for my husband and I, so it'll be good. Awesome. All right. Well, Stevie, thank you so much for your time. You're doing great stuff. I, um, let's keep connecting and looking forward to seeing more of your cool stuff. I love it. Well, thanks for chatting with me. It's always so fun to, you know, talk and share. And if anybody ever wants to give podcasting a try and you're a little scared, um, connect with me on Twitter, you know, at Stevie Frank 23. And I have met with several educators and I've sent them my resources, my PowerPoints that I've used to teach the, you know, to teach how I did it. Um, but I'm more than happy to connect with you one-on-one -on -one if you want to give it a shot. Awesome. Thanks so much, Stevie. Thanks for having me.